No, actually, Ohio State had no shots on goal on that five-minute major. Michigan had three, so great job by the shorthanded guys. What I really impressed me about the penalty kill this weekend was his sacrifice. Brandon Berlin, nine block shots over the weekend. Chad Langless had three block shots on Saturday alone. The guys were getting the way of the puck. They uh, had some huge saves themselves preventing goals for the Buckeyes. Well, and Denny, the, the flip side of that is the power play, which struggled this weekend, 0 for 10 yeah. on the weekend. And it's just the puck movement is there for sure. The, the yeah. control is there in the zone, but the shots aren't. They need to shoot the puck. I mean, you can't, sh- you can't <laughs> score <laughs> if you right. don't shoot, and that's what the Wolverines are doing all weekend. Everybody in the stands Friday night was yelling, shoot, shoot, ch- chanting <laughs> shoot, yelling it, screaming it, whatever it needed to be done, and no one was. I mean, they had a couple of the power plays they had where they you know, record no shots, but they'd be in the Ohio State zone for nearly a minute. Right. I mean, that's unacceptable. Right. There's one power play. They controlled the puck for at least 90 seconds. No shots on goal. We need to take a commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we'll take a look at who we thought was working overtime and how the series affected the CCHA standings. Stay tuned. And your mother was begging Barat to stop. <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? Are you ready for the show? Of course I am, you knucklehead. Who do you think I am? I'm Sir Charles Barkley. I don't know. Look at yourself before you pass judgment. (laughs) David, I was promised eight pounds of turkey in exchange for appearing on Varsity Blue. Where is my turkey? That is my question. But have you guys even thought about if Retrat should get fired or not this year? What are you saying? Is it true? Sure. Indeed. Yes. 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 I mean it this time. No, David, I will not answer your question until you give me the turkey that I was promised in exchange for appearing on the show. I cannot think until I get my turkey. We are... Uh, Varsity, Varsity Blue. Varsity Blues. If I had one word to describe Varsity Blue, it would definitely not be terrible, you knucklehead. Alexander Prasad. Welcome back to Wolf Overtime, Wolf Alex Prasad. <laughs> Denny Blunt. Peter Saw. Go ahead, you want to try again? Wolf Overtime. All right. yeah, that was Denny okay. Let's, let's Wolf hear. Overtime. Oh, yeah, those of you can't get out of here. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Not weak are the performances of these three guys. Take a look at who we chose for working overtime for this past weekend. I myself go with Treyas. I think that's the second straight week Treyas has been, uh, short guy. It's been mentioned. A little, little short guy. And another little short guy there, too. <laughs> so, yeah, a whole bunch of little midgets there. Yeah, but, of course, really big guy. Chris Brown. So, Denny, you in Merrick's stead have also decided on Chris Brown. Chris Brown, okay, not a midget, over six right. foot tall. Right. And a great weekend, plus two overall. Um, two goals, fifth and sixth on the year, even though he did get thrown. He's working overtime in the penalty box, which is very troublesome. Took a <laughs> stupid penalty early on in the third period. You're undermining your argument. <laughs> ah, well, I mean, he... But he had the two goals. No one claimed he wouldn't be a hothead ever, because that's what we love about Chris Brown, to right. be honest. Yeah. That last <laughs> series, if he hadn't won my heart previous to that, he yeah. did with a rain of fists. As we spoke before the show, he may win the Tristan Llewellyn Award. He's moved up to 41 penalty minutes on the season, which ties him with Scooter Vaughn for the team lead. Well, you talk about the chemistry of this new first line. Cap Bruce and Hagelin, definitely more finesse guys. You know, strong shooters for sure. Chris Brown provides that physical element that prevents Cap Bruce and Hagelin from being, you know, bogged up by right. other teams. Right, right. Yeah, they have to have a big guy to draw the attention of the defenseman in front of the crease. I went with Treyas, a second straight uh, weekend where I think he was a key. He had an assist on Saturday, and he really made that play. It was a great yeah. pass. And, of course, We've heaped <laughs> much praise on, on uh, I, Sean Hunwick. It's inexplicable, really, a right. Sean Hunwick season. And you know what? It's been a fun ride. Let's keep on watching and see what happens. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's just so gratifying yeah. with so many goaltenders with such large reputations and, you know, such high expectations and potential that always fell short, or at least the first, you know, last three or four years. And Sean Hunwick with zero expectations, <laughs> vastly exceeding them, Incredible. playing as well, I would say, as any goaltender oh. in our four years. Uh, absolutely. Here. He's riding that right out from last year, stepping in after the growing injury to Hogan. Everybody thought, well, before that, everybody thought, oh, the season's over, I've been playing awful. Now right. Hunwick steps in, oh, it's even going to be worse, and they ride it all the way to the CCHA title. Right. Uh, uh, a key growing pull against Notre Dame uh, change the fortunes of that season uh, in a positive way. Uh, maybe even this season. Who knows? And maybe even this season. That's true. Uh, let's take a look at the CCHA standings now. We talked about you know, a sweep is great, but still Michigan one point behind Notre Dame for that first spot. They do have two games at hand over uh, the Irish. Miami there also tied for second with 49, but again with two extra uh, games there. The five uh, losses in overtime for the Red Hawks. And you see how it breaks down. Western Michigan there and nine, yeah. six, and nine. Not a bad season. Nine overtime in. games, and that's just in conference. We're going to talk about Western uh, coming up a little bit later. So, 
We can talk pairwise, too. Michigan moved up from a tie from 12th before this weekend to a tie from 9th. It actually looks that there's a lot of flippable uh, people uh, or teams above Michigan in the pairwise standings. In, in Ohio State, despite being 9th place in CCHA, still very close to being a 500 team. If they went out, they can be a 500 team. That would make them a team under consideration a for tuck, their boosting. Right? A tuck, yes, a Justin Tuck. Further boosting <laughs> Michigan's uh, seeding in the tournament. After looking at that standings, this weekend was really huge. Taking advantage of Ohio State, who, yes, they are near 500, but towards the bottom of the CCHA standings, getting a full six points out of them rather than something less, which we've seen many times before from this Michigan team, getting less than what they should out of a weekend. Um, I mean, that's big for solidifying a, a high seed in the CCHA tournament. Right. Well, they've, they've clinched a bye in the first round at this point now. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, we're talking about Scooter Vaughn being uh, one of the Michigan's leading scorers. A big surprise coming into the season only with two goals. Our very own Merrick Stone caught up with Scooter to ask him about those goals and a couple other things. Take a look. Uh, you have kind of got off to quite a quick start this season. Uh, nine goals, which is more than in the previous season. The season's not even over yet. Yeah. So how do you explain that? Uh, it's my senior year. It's the last year here, so I did a little harder training in the offseason uh, to get ready for this season. I uh, know how to make a bigger impact coming in with my last year. So, uh, I mean, a little bit of luck, a little bit of confidence uh, all combined to uh, start off with a good start. And you're quite the fan favorite. I don't know if, if you're aware of that. No, no, I'm not. Oh, you're not? Well, just so you know, you are quite the fan favorite. And um, speaking, though, of your success now as a forward, how do you, uh, you know, how was that transition from being a defenseman to a forward? Uh, I mean, it was tough. I never really played uh, forward uh, at the college level ever coming into uh, last year, or actually my sophomore year CCHA. So, uh, I mean, I adjusted last year. I had to kind of work out the kinks, but uh, this year I kind of got the ball rolling and I was ready to go. Oh, terrific. Now, we're going into a pretty big weekend. It's a big rivalry weekend. Not only are you a senior, but this year you really have been on a roll. So how do you speak of the rivalry, you know, in its history, but then also what you specifically uh, look forward to doing this weekend? Uh, I mean, it's a big rivalry. I mean, Michigan OSU, a uh, long-lasting rivalry tradition with schools. I mean, it goes back for football, hockey, basketball. So, uh, I mean, in the other sports, uh, we've been on the short end of the stick the last couple of years. But uh, I think with hockey, it's a little bit different. Uh, I mean, we split with them down in Columbus earlier this year. So uh, we're looking forward to get six points this weekend. And coming out of these last couple of uh, games, last three games in particular have been pretty rough. How do you make that turnaround and, uh, you know, have some wins going forward and finishing out the season? Uh, I mean, yeah, the last three games uh, haven't fared the way we liked, but, uh, I mean, we have to move forward sometime. It's getting into playoff hockey, so we're going to have to start playing well, uh, doing the little things, and it's going to start with defense. So uh, hopefully we have a strong defensive game and the offense will come and hopefully we find the back of the net. Now, how do you predict the end of the season going? Where, where does Michigan finish? Uh, I mean, we're, we're looking for a top one finish, so anything short will be kind of a disappointment. But uh, we got to start playing well right now and heading into playoffs, and hopefully start playing well, finish with the number one seed, and uh, the ball starts rolling there going into playoffs. So there is Scooter Vaughn for you. No one would have thought that Scooter was going to be one of Michigan's leading scorers this year, Peter. And no one also would anticipate his hobby that we, you didn't hear about it in this clip, but we have a little bit more information. Inside perspective, Peter Sell. He is a disc jockey, a DJ. A, a disc jockey. And we, we don't know his name, but we assume it's DJ Scoot Scoot, just because that seems to make sense. That it has to be. If it's not, it should be. Yes, and, and also another fun Scooter fact, his dog has a Twitter account. Yes. Not just Scooter. You can follow Scooter on Twitter if you like. <laughs> you can also follow his dog. Uh, and her his paws, dog speaks. Yeah. Her paws. I don't know how he Here's paws it on his Blackberry. Paws. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so hopefully you know a little bit more about Scooter Vaughn right now. And any ladies out there, uh, if you're interested, it's a little bit late because Valentine's Day was last week, but Louis Caparuso is available and seems to know his stuff. Take a look. I'm speeding. Here we go. Senior Louis Caparuso of the Michigan hockey team knows a lot about love, but even he needs the MGoBlue.com Valentine's Day survival kit. A shiny credit card, a nice silk tie, a Valentine's Day card, a box of chocolates, tickets to Mock Rock, a beautiful stuffed animal, a bigger box of chocolates, flowers, more chocolates, candles, cologne, more chocolate, <laughs> love coupons, perfume, no perfume for her, 
more cologne, more flowers, and don't forget the stretch limo. Damn it. I, I, it's a good thing, guys, it, that Caparuso's hands on the ice with his stick in hand trying to control the puck are a lot better than those in that video yeah, because yeah, he was really having trouble with the flowers and candy. <laughs> yeah, he was had some hands of cement in that anyhow. Uh, so we need to go to commercial break, but coming back on the other side, I promise we'll focus on hockey again. We're going to talk the Western Michigan series. Welcome back to World Overtime, Peter Saul, Denny Blunt, Alex Prasad, and we're going to welcome in now Brad Boyke, who's going to tell us a little about Western Michigan. How's it going, Brad? It's going good, Alex. Good to be here. All right, well, Brad, first, tell us a little bit about West, the West, Western Michigan Broncos, because I remember a couple years ago, Western Michigan, you're like, nah, tomato can, no worries. They came into Yost and actually beat the Wolverines. They're actually not having a bad year this year. Not at all, actually. This isn't your old dad's uh, Western Michigan. <laughs> They're having a pretty good season so far. They're 15, 7, and 10 overall. 9, 6, and 9 in the conference, which is good for fourth place overall in the CCHA right now. They're a very balanced team, about fourth in the conference in scoring offense, fifth in scoring defense. Maybe the most impressive thing about Western right now, though, is that in their last 15, 15 games, they've lost just four, and three or four of those losses coming in shootouts. So only once they've been defeated in regulation in the last 15 games. And last Friday, they beat Miami in Miami after coming down after coming back from down three to one to win in a shootout. Yeah, that's something Michigan couldn't do in their series in Oxford for sure. That was actually the nation's nation's longest unbeaten streak at fourteen um, games. Yeah, at fourteen games uh, this year, and also it'll be the first time since two thousand two that Michigan and Western face off as both ranked teams. So, Brad, what should we look for in this series? What's going to be you know a key for Michigan to win this game, or what's you know a key for Western to maybe pull off the upset here? Well, I think a big key to this series is going to be special teams. And that's really where I think Michigan can attack Western. Western is only eighth in the conference in the power play and second to last in the penalty kill. So a real fun battle to watch will be our power play, which you said was over 10 and really dismal at times for their penalty kill, which is also quite piss poor. And I think a real key to winning for Michigan will be to jump on Western early. They, you know, against Ohio State, outshot them 17 to six, I believe, in the first period on Saturday, but yet it was still a close game through all. While Western is such a very good team. They scored 12 goals in the first period, 25 in the second, and 30 in the third period throughout their season. Very come on late in game, so if Michigan must have hang around, they will probably come back. All right, thanks a lot, Brad, for that. Thank Filling you, in uh, some memory gaps for us. So only have a minute left here. Peter, Peter prediction, Please, pretty, pretty, look at that. Look how I strung together that alliteration. That clever. It was clever. It's uh, quite clever. Yeah, we know West Michigan's a good team. Michigan has struggled against in the past. I would not feel confident saying that Michigan gets six points here, although they are playing very well. Uh, I'd say four to five points is a pretty good estimate for what we see this hap happening this weekend. Western Michigan I kind think, of similar to I think they're Alaska. Gonna, I think as much as yeah. this kills me to say, I think the Wolverines are going to lose three to two Friday night. This is one of those slow yeah, Friday nights. Two. Like three always, 3-2. Not 4-3, three, not 2-1. Two. Two nope, 3-2. Three, three to, three to, three to They're going to pull Hunwick with a minute to go. Brown's going to hit the post or something. And <laughs> Saturday, <laughs> this comes, shot. This Saturday, comes actually Saturday, they come out and really assert their dominance and win 4-1. to Well, as Brad mentioned, a quick start will be key for the Wolverines this week, this weekend. This That's all the time we have this week for Wolf Overtime for Peter Saul, Denny Blunt. I'm Alex Rasad. Hopefully next week. Don't say Peter, it. Peter, we'll be talking about something good. <laughs>